Welcome to the Benefiting from a SEPM Disaster Recovery Plan lesson. The lesson objectives are shown in the slide. This is the SEPM Disaster Recovery Recommendations topic. Describing SEPM Services In SEP 14, the following semantic endpoint protection services are started automatically by the Windows Service Control Manager. Semantic Endpoint Protection Manager, Semantic Endpoint Protection Manager Web Server, Semantic Endpoint Protection Launcher, Semantic Endpoint Protection Manager API Service, Semantic Embedded Database, or MS SQL Database. Note that MS SQL services are started on the SEPM when the database is installed on the same server as the SEPM. The Live Update service is started when a live update is scheduled. Starting and Stopping SEPM Service The Semantic Endpoint Protection Manager runs as an automatic service. If the service does not start automatically, you can start and later stop the service from Start Administrative Tools services. From a command prompt, you can start and stop the Semantic Endpoint Protection Manager service using NetStart, SemServe, and NetStop SemServe respectively. If you stop the SEPM service, clients can no longer connect to the SEPM. If users are required to communicate with the SEPM to connect to the network, the users are denied access until the SEPM services is restarted. These are the general steps to follow when preparing a disaster recovery plan. To prepare for recovery after a hardware failure or database corruption, you should back up the information that is collected after you install Symantec Endpoint Protection Manager. You can back up the embedded database using the Backup and Restore wizard, or when running the SQL database, use Management Studio. Next, Back up the recovery file that contains the SEPM's encryption password, license files, and other key information. Back up the private key and server certificate. This is particularly important if you have updated or changed the initial server certificate. Symantec recommends that you also record the SEPM IP address, hostname, and domain IDs. This information is necessary if you experience a hardware failure. Finally, Store your backup in a secure, off-site location. This is the running on-demand and scheduled backups topic. Database Properties The database contains the following information to monitor security breaches on the network. Security and enforcement policies, all configuration settings, including data about attacks, logs, and reports. Symantec Endpoint Protection supports an embedded or Microsoft SQL database. Embedded database is typically used for organizations with 500 or fewer clients that connect to the Symantec Endpoint Protection Manager. Microsoft SQL Server is used for larger organizations. The information in the database is stored in tables. The organization of tables is called a database schema. The schema is provided for administrators who may require the schema for specialized reporting. Backing up databases and removing unused space is a necessary step in the maintenance of a production database. Backing up a database creates a separate copy of the database in case of data corruption in the database or hardware failure. Store backups on a separate disk drive that is also periodically backed up. You can back up the database from the Symantec Endpoint Protection Manager console using the Symantec Endpoint Protection Manager tools that is automatically installed during the installation. You can also back up an MS SQL database only using the Microsoft SQL Server Enterprise Manager to set up a maintenance plan that includes automatic backups. Embedded or an MS SQL database, from the Semantic Endpoint Protection Manager console you can perform on-demand backup or schedule automatic backups. Incremental backups of the databases are not supported. You can perform an on-demand backup of an embedded database with the Symantec Endpoint Protection Manager console, navigate to Admin Servers. Database Backup and Restore Utility, navigate to the Windows Start menu and select Programs, Symantec Endpoint Protection Manager, Symantec Endpoint Protection Tools, Database Backup and Restore. Note, this path may vary by operating system. For example, Windows Server 2012 is in Windows Start menu, select Apps, Symantec Endpoint Protection Manager, Database Backup and Restore. You can set up schedules for the automatic backup of both MS SQL and embedded databases in the Symantec Endpoint Protection Manager. Backups occur automatically at the scheduled time. 
By default, backup files are stored in a backup folder created in the highlighted path specified. The backup is placed in a zip file labeled with the date on which the backup occurs. Backing up the MS SQL database is typically handled using Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. To initiate a backup, select the SEPM database properties, tasks, and choose backup. This opens the backup database dialog box where options for backup type and location can be selected. On-demand backup can also be performed using a database maintenance plan. Access to initiate SQL database backups is typically performed by the enterprise DBA or other authorized users. Using a maintenance plan in SQL Server Management Studio automates the database backup and other tasks. The database admin can use the maintenance plan wizard and job schedule to set an appropriate time and frequency for backups to occur automatically. Database maintenance options help you to manage the size of your database by specifying how long to keep data. These tasks can be automated using scheduled tasks in the database properties dialog box. For an MS SQL database, do not configure database maintenance tasks in both the SEPM and Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. Another option to consider for helping to manage the size of your database is automatically purging the records of clients that have not connected in a fixed number of days. This setting is enabled using a separate schedule in the Domain Properties configuration screen. The default schedule for VDI is to keep client records for 7 days. All other client records will be kept for 30 days by default. After clients are purged, all logs pertaining to these endpoints are also purged. Using these options can prevent a production database from growing bloated with out-of-date, irrelevant data. This is the backing up and storing system files topic. The disaster recovery file is a compressed file that contains the following information. An Apache server certificate and private key, the SEPM certificates, semantic license files, the settings properties file, which has information containing key, key store password, ports used by the SEPM, the SEPM server ID, domain ID field, database type, encryption password, and port information. By default, the file is located in a program files, semantic endpoint protection manager, server private key backup, recovery timestamp.zip file location. If you have more than one domain ID, ensure that you copy all domain IDs to the recovery file as only the default domain ID is originally stored. The server properties file includes the server settings for semantic endpoint protection manager. You may need to export and import the server properties XML file in the following situations. You use a disaster recovery file to reinstall Semantic Endpoint Protection Manager. The disaster recovery file does not include the server settings. When you reinstall Semantic Endpoint Protection Manager, you lose any default server settings that you had previously changed. You can use the exported server properties file to re-import the changed server settings. You install Semantic Endpoint Protection Manager in a test environment and later install the management server in a production environment. You can import the exported server properties file to the production environment. You upgrade the management server from a previous version to a newer version and you need to import all the policies and locations. Digital certificates are the industry standard for authenticating and encrypting sensitive data. Encrypting a data transfer with a digital certificate prevents the reading of information as it passes through the network. Symantec uses a combination of SSL encrypted and non-encrypted HTTP ports for communication between itself and other SEPMs and clients, and by default, the SEPM digitally signs client packages, content updates, and policies. The Symantec Endpoint Protection Manager supports the following types of certificates. JKS Key Store, PKCS12 Key Store, the key store password must be the same as the key password. The key store password is usually exported from Internet Information Services. Certificate and private key file, DER and PEM format. Symantec supports unencrypted certificates and private keys in the DER or PEM format. PKCS8 encrypted private key files are not supported. Use the management server certificate wizard to update, backup, or generate a new certificate. For more information on certificates and encryption, see the, the KB article noted. 
As a safety precaution, back up the certificate information. If the management server is damaged or you forget the key store password, you can easily retrieve the password. Server certificate information is also contained in the disaster recovery file. If you have not updated the default self-signed server certificate, then this is an optional step. If you have changed the certificate, use this process to back up your updated certificate. Using the Manage Server Certificate wizard will create a new time-stamped server cert backup file containing an updated key store file. As a best practice, and in the event of complete hardware failure, you must reinstall the management server using the IP address and hostname of the original management server. Add the IP address and hostname to a text file such as backup.txt. Store all the backup data in a secure location, such as another computer, cloud storage, or off-site location. This is the Restoring a Failed SEPM Hardware or Software Failure topic. If you need to reinstall or reconfigure the management server, you can import all your settings by using the disaster recovery file. You can also use the recovery configuration process to install an additional site for replication. The general steps to follow are shown in the slide. If an issue occurs, you may need to restore the latest database backup to get a clean copy of the database. Some data may need to be re-entered into the database during the recovery process. However, the main structure and the majority of the data is retained by using a recent backup. The restoration of the database takes a few minutes. When the restoration of the database is completed, the following message is displayed. The database has been restored successfully. You may need to generate a new server certificate under the following conditions. You reinstall SEPM on a different computer due to hardware failure. You reinstall SEPM on a different computer, but install as a new installation rather than using a recovery file. You restore the database from backup, but the certificate on the management server no longer matches the restored database. To generate a new server certificate, use the Manage Certificate Wizard found under Admin, Servers, Tasks, Manage Server Certificate. This slide summarizes this lesson. For more information about the topics discussed in this lesson, refer to the resources listed on the slide and remember to frequently check the Semantic Support website.